Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by Pariah Pickups. What you want, what you need, what you love. Visit pariahpickups.com and at Pariah Pickups on Instagram. And LoudTracks.com. Visit LoudTracks.com to get your favorite band merchandise and purchase a Jeremy White Podcast t-shirt to support the channel. Hey, this is Gavin from Bush, and you listen to The Jeremy White Show. The Jeremy White Podcast. Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Right. Uh, well, let's get right into it. Our next guest is legendary frontman of one of the greatest bands to come out of the 90s. New television series called No Cover is going to be in the works. They're, I know they've already gone through the applicants. I want to talk all about that. Plus, Kingdom came out last summer. All that and more. Welcome to the show, Mr. Gavin Rosdale. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Exactly. This is this is so great. So Mitch and I were just kind of joking off off the air about this this new TV show. It's like you know you've got American Idol and The Voice and all these shows, but you guys are literally looking for a genuine, legitimate new band to come out and play originals and make it on their own with their own tunage. Yes. You know, like what kind of challenges come along with that? Good lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good lyrics. Good lyrics. You know, it's. As a lyricist, you know, someone's given myself to music. It's a, it's an ironic um, conundrum that some of the time the lyrics seem to the last thing that people are kind of paying attention to. But we there were some great people in there, and we weeded them out. And just it, I had a great time. The the, car, the other judges were amazing. There was a really good balance of people, mm. and uh, it was just fun to have a job. You know, I mean, I went to every day to work and just hung out and like, you know just had to go there and give my opinion. I was like, you know, normally if I go to a set, it's like if I'm in a movie, I have to know lines, mm -hmm. TV show, no lines, a video, you got to know the words, you got to feel good, is that. This was like, could you show up and tell us what you think? I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like getting paid to give my opinion, finally. Yeah. Anytime, anytime, yeah. And I mean, Talk you got to, to hang out with the Coop. You got to hang out with Alice Cooper. <laughs> yeah, that's the greatest oh, thing man. right there. But, what a uh, sweetheart. Talk to me just real quick about the challenges that these artists and that the show is going to have maybe connecting with fans. Because, you know, when you watch some of these other shows, you hear a guy singing, you go, oh, Adam Lambert is singing that White Snake song. Great. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, this time they don't have that crutch in, in a sense. So what do you tell the artists and, and how do you convey that to the public to say, hey, the main, the main thing that I felt the gist of it that I got from uh, being on there was the hardest thing for up and coming people or, or, or musicians is to um, be inspired by their favorite artists, right? But yet present their voices themselves. And that was the biggest dilemma really was a lot of people like some bands, like a couple of bands, like I could think of immediately that had the most incredible musicians, these kids, you can't believe how good they are. But they, they, the, the last thing they've done, they've, they've learned how to play, like one kid just plays like Eddie Van Halen. It's just unbelievable. Mm. But the problem is, is that we had Eddie and we know Eddie. And this kid is like 16. And so it's all like, dude, just, you've, you, you know, music is a beautiful legacy. It's a, it's a process of like uh, passing the baton. But you don't take that same baton. You just get inspired by it. So the trick was to find people that... Um, were proficient, had great history in music, but really their own voices. And then some people were, were like nearly really great. That's a really tricky one because mm -hmm. no one, you know, it's really, what are you going to do? You're seventh. But basically everyone that got through had a lot of a lot of talent. And uh, I don't know how it's going to come across. I tried not to be too Simon Cowell-like, but I was honest. You know, well, you've got the honest. accent, so that's half the battle. Yeah, that's racist. <laughs> that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's racy. <laughs> so, I mean, well, you just said the kid, you know, was up there playing like Eddie Van Halen. I mean, yeah. you know, does he just bust out eruption in the middle of the audition? Like, you know, like, or is oh, it just, just literally that, 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 that degree of ability, that, that level of ability is quite stunning. But, you know, there's a difference. Like if you think if you take a classical musician, for example, classical musicians, you know, they do if you want to completely trigger a classical musician, absolutely just tell them to improvise mm -hmm. they just no 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 no. we don't improvise they they study six hours a day they read that's it so there's a danger that you could be really good at an instrument but that doesn't mean like 
you're tell actually really good. Which doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you have anything to say. I mean, I'm not. I, they're, they're probably all better guitar players than me, but I've had a really long career because it's 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 the ideas that go with it. It's not just the ability right. because you can keep going and find there's always someone better than you that plays better, plays faster, plays weirder. But it's like you know, there's only there's only one Stevie Wonder, there's only one Prince. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what you got to do is find your voice. And so I think all of us we had a very good. Um, consistent uh, approach to helping these people realize their dreams was like, just be the more you can be yourself, the more interesting, the more weird and the more particular you are to yourselves. Mm-hmm. That's what we like. That's all I pushed on them. So, you know, it's going to be edited and I don't know if I'm going to come across, I look like a jerk, but I try to be kind. You know? I try to be nice. You know, be <laughs> yeah, cool. well, you know hey. uh, just real, just real quick on that in terms of musical genre or musical style, did it matter if it was a, a rap artist or, or a no, rock artist? What, what no. were you looking for particularly? Uh, a character. I mean, there was one, okay. there was one band called my favorite and they was so heavy. It was like, um, it was like a body count. It was so heavy wow. and so dangerous and so exciting. And I was, I pushed them, I voted for them and I was pushing to get them in the next round. They didn't have any more songs. I was like, so I was fighting and then the producers afterwards, because there was a mercy council. So people can get saved and this and that. And I said, did they make it? And they go, no, because we went to the studio and they just literally didn't have any more songs. It's like, they only have three songs. It's like, well, Damn. dude, could you get a bit more ready? This is your break. <laughs> fuck's sake. So yeah. we didn't expect incredible. to get to the fourth round. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't prepared for another question. We didn't know we needed more than an EP. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I was like, guys, and I think what happened is that they had, they honestly, they had one guy that sounded like he was in Sepultura and one guy who sounded like uh, Chuck, Chuck, uh, uh, Chuck, Chuck D. Billy, Chuck D, Chuck D, Chuck, Chuck D. D. Oh, wow. Oh, no, I mean, they were, they were legit. I loved them. They, I was, they were my, them, I, I couldn't, them. my money was all on them until I found out they didn't have any more material. I was like, fuck, mm-hmm. I would have written a song from in the morning, helped yeah. them out. Well, that's the thing. I mean, do you bring somebody in like Desmond Child or, uh, you know, Gavin Rosdale to co-write with you for the album or? Yeah. I, I just up to them. I mean, they were they, they were so street, um, just looking cool as fuck. And I just was like, these guys have got it. I was like, yes, I still was like, finally, they're going to take you by the head and like throw you around. And the other people, there was, a, there was an act that's more like that band Fantagram. They were more like, uh, I loved them. They were great. Musically, wow. they were great. She was really good and they were very accomplished. They hadn't had a break. They were a little bit older than the other band, but they were brilliant. So I really voted for them. So it, just, it was weird, but it, it, I think the best that we saw won. That's what well, I would say. You said something really interesting at the top there where you said, you know, you kind of want to take your influences and sort of go a little bit further with it. You know, mm-hmm. when you talk about Bush and, you know, those first couple albums, I mean, you were in the mid nineties where grunge is really at the top of peak. And I mean, you know, you grew up through the eighties and stuff. What was it? Did you connect with those bands at all in the eighties? Like the Def Leppard and Motley Cruz or. No, I couldn't. I mean, I'm, I'm actually really good friends with Tommy Lee. So I, I don't want to re- say anything about Motley Crue. I, being from England, we didn't know them. Mm-hmm. That's not a band, anything. So in England, it was all the four, My Bloody Valentine, um, the Pixies. That's that's what it was. Uh, the the that's what the eighties was to me. The so jam, like punk music that had gone beyond the three chord style of the seventies when it began. You know, post punk. Um, and now you have idols and bands like that that I fucking think are brilliant. You know, mm-hmm. amazing band um, or. Um, so, but what was it about those '80s bands that you, that just didn't speak to you? Uh, the artifice of it. I don't Europe an artifice. I don't like artifice in music. I don't like it. I like that's yeah. why I like the Pixies. When I first heard the Pixies, I was like, I was super into reggae, and I just liked the Pixies because it was aggressive. So I like public image. So I went from the Sex Pistols. I was obsessed with the Sex Pistols. So after John John Lydon left the Sex Pistols, he goes into Public Image Limited. That's where I learn about bass and jar wobble and the whole cycles of repetition, the whole bass, Glenn Branca thing, bass, bass, bass. And so then all the sound systems in London where I grew up, you'd have like 
you know, all the sound systems, so the toasters, the rap, not the 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 uh, MCs, mm-hmm. uh, and that that culture was part of my culture. But I like the punk ethic. So when I saw the four, or the you know the, the Pixies, I thought they're amazing. And then I had heard. Then I went to see. I saw Jane's Addiction, early in version of Jane's Addiction. Mm. I was like, what are these guys? What's this performance? Who's this fucker? Yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ! So you take all those things. And you put them into a pot and that's all my beginnings. You know, like I was totally into grunge and Soundgarden, Nirvana. They were very inspiring. But then we listened to Come Down. That's nicked from Billy Cobham. That do 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 That's Billy Cobham. That's mm-hmm. Massive Attack. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was always trying to do those things. Then that's why I did the science of the Steve Albini record because it's like live. But yeah. then I was like, oh, I need a hi-fi record. I did science of things do the English kind of trip hop, little trippy and there's uh, tricky times and Portishead and blur and everything was all bubbling like that. So I was like a bit of rock with that. And then I was like, fuck that. I need to do like a heavy record. So I went off and did a, whatever it was after that. And it's always been this cycle of, and now I just make heavy records. Now I just, now it's just heavy, 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 heavy. Yeah. The next record is so heavy. The kingdom was heavy. And this is super heavy, the new one. I just, heavy is so funny. Because people are like, aren't you meant to be sitting down now? It's like, fuck it. No, I'm going to fucking go out in flames, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> As you should. As you yeah, should. Absolutely. So that's it. So that's how, that's my journey. That's what I try to tell these uh, people, you know, explain it, that the more you dive into yourself, the more interesting you potentially become and the less you show of yourself, the less interesting you become because we've, we don't need a 16 year old kid playing like Eddie Van Halen. Mm -hmm. No one needs that. Nobody. We need Eddie Van Halen. Well, you mentioned uh, Steve Albini. What was it like working with him? Because to me, he sort of was the, the anti Mutt Lang in a sense, whereas, you know, Mutt is full production and Steve is full sort of soul and get to the essence. Yes, uh, exactly. Talk to me about working with him. Yeah, Steve doesn't even uh, like to be accredited as a producer on albums no. anymore. He could, producer, he calls them pig pig points. He doesn't want pig points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact, it's, it's his wife's fiftieth uh, birthday on Wednesday in Chicago, and we just sent a birthday video for her. So we've stayed. I've stayed excellent friends with Steve and Heather, uh, very close friends, really good friends of mine. Um, Working with him was a dream because I'd grown up on, well, the Pixies, Bone Bone Machine, Surfer Rosa was a record that literally, like this, never mind the bollocks was a big record. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, um, the Joshua Tree, um, probably Appetite for Destruction. Great album. And you got Tom Zutat on your show on... Uh... Uh, Oh, right. I never, I never came across him, actually. And is he a mentor? And then you had a... a, a, a um, yeah, that was it. And then, um, so those were big records to me. So when I heard that, so when we were, had success with, um, and then and, and Rid of Me, that record, the PG Harvey record, Rid of Me, was phenomenal. And it was a very crazy move. We were very compared to Nirvana, and it was a bit commercial suicide. Was it the right thing to go and work with a person that had done the record with him? Mm-hmm. But when I went for lunch with Steve in, in um Greek town in Chicago. I don't know. I just was like, he was such a hero of mine. And we discussed the Pixies and the making of Surf Rosa. It took nine days to do it. Mm. And I just thought if anyone could pick up the band, what we'd accrued uh, being, being on the road for three years, it would be him. And we right. did. We really got that. Now, when I listen back to that record, I'm like, damn, man, look, I couldn't have fucking sung that another couple of times. I'm like, you know, just really out of tune singing. Yeah, but that's the, yeah. uh, there's, there's a yeah. perfection in the imperfection. Yes. That and is, it feels, yes. uh, yeah. You need essence. It needs yeah. soul. So he, so he, he just did that. We did, I, I'll give you an example. Like normally when you play with a string section, you know, I might record a guide vocal, a guide track, sing to it. Um, then replay the guitar, then sit back while the players come in, they play around me, then I go back in, maybe I sing it again. And then it's all said and done. We look like we've all been musicians from the 60s playing together. Well, we haven't at all. We've done it piecemeal. <laughs> right. Steve, Steve's like, no, 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 no. You're playing with them. So mm-hmm. I had to sit and play. And 
I mean, I'm not even a good guitar player now. I don't know what the fuck I was like then. So there I am struggling with these beautiful musicians but and just thinking, don't fuck up, get to the end of the song because, you know, he doesn't do the... Right. He doesn't do much editing. Do the punch. Oh, calm. No, nope, there's no stuff. calm. No, no. no one I mean, time he... I said, one time to him, I think you'll love the story. One time I said to him, hey, Steve, I was thinking about, the only thing I don't agree with Steve is he doesn't, he's not the Beach Boys. Now, I think at studios, you should experiment. I think experimentation in the studio, I love Brian Eno. So the idea of not experimenting in the studio is like almost, it's, it's hard for me. You know, I love painters. They spend hours in studios. Well, of course you experiment. Well, it's but part it's of the great fun. moment. Once I said, exactly, once I said to Steve, I said, Steve, I was thinking about this, uh, this harmony. Now, um, now he, you, you're allowed to do a harmony if it's compositionally intended. You're not allowed to have a secondary inspirational moment for some reason, right? Steve's weird, right? Okay. Weird. So I said, I said, Steve, can I put a harmony on this bit? I promise you, I, I, I thought of it as I wrote the song. You know, it's no problem. I, I've always thought of it. This, this harmony is as old as the song itself. So he goes, okay. So I go out and sing it. And I look at the track sheet afterwards. And I was going to call the record this, but I go for Razor Blade Suitcase. He, I looked at the track listing of number 14 ahead. Track 14, Pointless Harmony. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, really bizarre that you had to have so, it, like a preconceived thing, a lot for him yeah. to let you record it. I don't want to know what to tell you. After we, after he worked with us, um, w- uh, he did get the call from Page and Plant. And he did the page plant record there. He, he shut it. You know, he didn't say much and just drank his half a pint of cider and, uh, <laughs> and ate his meals and just worked as long as they wanted. So he did right. plenty of experimentation. Well, and he'd do stuff like crazy stuff, like put a tin foil between the strings to make the thing. I was like, come on, Steve, just, just flex your stuff, you know? So I forced him to do stuff with us. He was fantastic. He's great. We love wow. him. He, he's great. Awesome. And, by, and by the way, if you listen to like early Sabbath and stuff, it's full of time signature mistakes. It's full of right. it. But that's what we love. Well, yeah. we yeah. love it. Sure. They're human records. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. It's not put on the grid and quantized yeah. and, you know, yeah. made robotic. Yeah. And those records yeah. that, you know, I mean, you listen to the, like the Tad records and even, you know, like the Breeders and Jesus Lizard, who you guys yeah. were with late 90s. I mean, Jesus. one of my favorite... Uh, Albini records is John Spencer Blues Explosion. Oh right. man, incredible yeah. bands! You know, yeah. talking yeah. about the Jesus litter. Do you have any tales from that tour you guys did together in like the late nineties? My buddy Adam. Adam I have so Adam. many. I mean, I, I'm. I haven't. I've been trying to get a hold of David through the pandemic. Um, and we. He lives in LA now. And he's an actor, and we are really. I haven't seen him. But he's like my brother. I love him so much, and yeah. he's such a talented man. Um. Probably my favorite memory, I would say July 4th, Hershey Park, and he's wearing a, a chef's hat, um, no underwear, a chef's apron, and cowboy boots, and just does the show stark naked. But what's beautiful about him, and then in the crowd, nuts everywhere, and just, you know, now probably couldn't do it now, you know, probably get in trouble. But <laughs> what was the best thing about his performance? Now, he's probably my favorite performer ever I've seen to watch. Um, I love that that band. Um, in fact, I just got Tomahawk have just brought out a new record, and uh, and uh, 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 Dwayne just sent me the copy, and he's a t-shirt. Mm. So he, it just was um, a real learning experience because he just defies. I mean, I don't know what he's very pear ubu. You know, that's where the, the Jesus Lizard, very pear ubu. But what a freaking band! And so tight and strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was such an honor. That was the best tour I've ever done. With Souls, my band from Sweden, and them, and then us. That was, you know, I mean, I'm really happy now. But when I think of that, that was a lot of happens too. Great Those tour. were good times. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, uh, Kingdom's available now, plus this great new TV show. Is it- yeah, Amazon every Christmas every day from Amazon. I bought that fucker his boat. Jesus Christ, my kids have got my password. I'm screwed. <laughs> I know. Dude, same day um, shipping that'll that'll ruin your credit card. <laughs> talk to me just uh, just real quick about about the kingdom because you haven't really you haven't been able to tour on it. So so do you get back in there and make a follow up right away, or do you say no, mother? F- I'm going to tour this thing. Before Hell no, I make I'm already new. I'm 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 halfway through a bunch of songs. Oh, nice. And um, then I also plan to go collaborate, see what the band have got, see what Tyler's got. You know. I'm open to, I just want to do a great record. So I'm already 10 songs in 
to a new record. And uh, I think that, you know, we had 30 million plays off of, of the kingdom. Now, yeah. would, we have, would we have had 100 million if we'd been on tour? Maybe. But, mm-hmm. you know, look, people were dying. We, 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 we stayed safe. The world collapsed. I didn't moan for one minute about it. It's just, we're just dealing with, everyone's dealing with different uh, situations. And uh, it's going to be like, I know people are saying it, but I think it's going to be like the roaring 20s. You know, when we go back, I want everyone to come to the shows and lose inhibitions and have fun and hang out. It's going to be such a, a celebration of life, you know? So I think it'd be smart if you guys agree, you know, make a new record and then go later in the year or come next year and, and, and tour everything, tour all the records. Who cares? You know, just, just yeah. be great. Try and be good. Are you, are you one good. of those artists that's kind of like afraid to t- of, of the past discography? Because there are certain artists out there that are like, oh, we're not playing the old stuff. We're just playing the new stuff. Don't talk to uh, us even about the old stuff. Well, no, I don't believe in that being that dogmatic because obviously that 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 those old songs uh, bought these headphones. Uh, the new songs didn't buy these headphones. So uh, <laughs> Not yet. Uh, I, not at uh, one cent uh, of dream. So, so no, I, I don't have that. I look at those songs with such gratitude it, that I have to find a balance. I think of it like when I go and see a show, if I go and see the Pumpkins, they better play the fucking hits as yeah. well as some yeah. things else. I'm just like, what's the point? So you just got to play the, do the balance. The hard, the challenging thing is the last couple of tours we've done, these sort of festival type rotating headline, which bands we love, we've done it with uh, STP, with Live, we're about to do it with um, STP again in Australia. The only complaint I would have is you only play an hour. And in that hour, mm. now it's a festival set. I got to play Glistery and I got to play Come Down. I got to play Machine Head. I got to play Zen. I yeah. got to play Little Things. I just got to, or else people are like, fuck that guy. The Flowers on a grave. Yeah. So now you six. Now you've only got four left. Now you're talking about a new record, talking about the kingdom. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. So we, I don't want to do the, the, I mean, much as I love the Dave and the Foos. Um, the three and a half show hour shows i'm not strong enough to do vocally or physically so yeah i don't think that's a bit long for me but i do think an hour 45 show makes sense when you want to play the number of songs it just does yeah. you know you not more than it. that yeah and two two hours is is too much nobody needs that but i think one hour 30 set and then a the pause and then a 10 minute encore that's oh. a, that's that's my happy time that's my happy space as Mitch would say, say, just drop the drum solo and the guitar solo and put two more songs in. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. No no need to waste uh, song space on the drum solo. I'm just sorry. <laughs> well, nobody need, you know. nobody bought a ticket and goes, man, I hope they have a drum solo tonight. Oh, man. No. <laughs> we've never um, quite. The biggest we've done is we have an intro of a song called Testosterone, um, yeah. which starts with drums. And the only drum solo we ever had is the one time it was the drummer drummer's birthday. We had him start the song. And we just quit, left the stage. <laughs> it was nice. Just, just, I don't know how long he was there for, but it was good drama. It just was like Jesus fucking Christ, come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. awesome. Do that again. That uh, that I approve of comedy. I'm I'm for <laughs> all for comedy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know with Shellac, you know, one we know Shellac with Steve Albini's band. Do you know much about Shellac? Mm-mm. They're my favorite, singularly my favorite singular band of all time. I really? Love I love Shellac. Oh my god, the best band to see live ever. I would. I have traveled. I took Gwen to Belfast to see Shellac. Wow, that's how dedicated I am. Yeah, I took Gwen Gwen Stefani to uh, Belfast. Put a little bit of lead and a pencil. You know, give her a bit of humanity. I'm waiting for you and, to um, pull out your Schlack membership card, like out of your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a member of that of that fraternity. Uh, I'm they're very good friends of mine, and they do this wonderful thing at the end of their shows where the guys playing drums and Steve and uh, Bob, um, they not only do things, and then they catch the cymbals. They start uh, they start to take his whole kit off the stage. They don't have, obviously they're too cool for roadies, so they will take his. So he, they do walking off with a crash symbol, ride symbol. Oh, that's hat, awesome! Bombs, uh, and they he's deconstruct. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good. That's a good shtick. 
Oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah. Google it. You'll, you'll see it on YouTube. It's, it's all over YouTube. It's oh, my buddy Adam's going to love that story. That's oh, it's great. great. I approve of that. St- I, I approve yeah. of that. Uh, that. That's a good visual. That's a smart yeah. visual, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Just start rolling the amps off. Well, because right? the fans the are like, we want more, and they're like, we can't. The guy, everything's the, gone. The drummer, no, the drummer plays <laughs> in the front. He, the drummer is the center, and the other two are either side of him. And oh. uh, so it's a different look. I it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's something else. It's another, it's another dimension. I would love well, to. Yeah, you, you guys got to, you guys got to nick that bit. Just <laughs> the next Bush show, just start t- taking all the gear off the stage. Mid-song. Yeah. My, my band, they're a little bit molly cold for that. They don't, they're not lifting too much stuff. They're not lifting. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, I get the Eight opening minutes. band to lift the stuff off. <laughs> anyway all right well gavin this is awesome right out of time uh check out the kingdom it's available now where music is sold and no cover going to be very soon which is very exciting it's going to be my new favorite show let's hope so let's hope so and don't hate me for it i try to be honest (laughs) no listen you're there alice cooper's there what do you, Lizzie you Hale, what more do you want? Is it, do Lizzie? you want any questions you want anything about alice cooper any 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 dish on oh on mitch cooper? there's your chance there's your window well, uh, the one thing is uh, I'm very familiar with the Cooper camp. I've met them and interviewed them plenty of times. But yeah, what what's your great Alice Cooper story? Did he did he give you the old man perspective, for lack of a better word? Uh, that was, <laughs> that's a little clunky. Um, he was he reminded me of when I met when I was lucky enough to meet Tom Waits, and it was a lesson in the humility of of greatness and. It's a beautiful thing. You know, I've met so many people in this incredible journey I've been on and still on. Um, And, you know, the middling, the fair to middling musicians that you meet are usually the biggest bunch of arseholes you meet. Mm -hmm. And the the cream of the crop, the ones with the extraterrestrial vision, careers, someone like Mr. Alice Cooper, beautiful person, great perspective, full of wisdom, insight and kindness and it's a great sort of inspirational lesson of how to be as a human being because he's like the least jerky guy in the room <laughs> you know he's the coolest guy being in the troubadour so it was a real pleasure being around yeah. him. he's he's an, an oh, absolute man. sweetheart and i'll, and I'll tell you yeah. this and a great oh. golfer he's a scratch two he's two and i don't know golf i actually hate golf it's a terrible sport i think <laughs> but boring shit ever <laughs> it's an entitled, horrific white guy. It's like a drum thing. solo. Um, do you know, there was one time I was in Portugal. We had a couple of days off, and uh, I went off to play my tennis, and I was wandering around, drinking local wine all day long, having a laugh. And I walked into the lobby, and I heard this voice say, Hey, Gav, what are you doing? I walked past my drummer and my bass player. They are going to play golf, and they were dressed in their golf clothes. Oh, they boy. were like, such jerks. I walked right past them. I didn't know them. I'm 20 years straight, and that when they're sort of like their slacks and that look, they're just like like I don't know, Aryans, Aryans on a weekend out, you know, <laughs> like, the checkered pants oh and the, the vest. There's this Orange County racist people. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great. Well, we're running out of time, so this was great, Gav. Anything else All you right. want to say before we go? Thanks for having me. You know, and uh, and um, I'm working on the new record. Good. Love you. Awesome. Get on. Awesome. Let's do another show in Montreal. Not nine years has been too long. Are yeah. you guys in Montreal? Yes. Yeah. Oh, the, oh my God! So you have uh, all the the most incredible food up there. It's just yep. oh my God. Yeah, but next time you're in town, I'll take you to the places. Let me know. You will. Yeah, he he oh, knows yeah. the places. Jeremy, What's your by favorite the way? place. What's oh, there's so place? many. I mean, she's. Are you vegan? You vegetarian? Now I'm an omnivore. No, I'll, take I, it I, I, oh, well, I'll take how it. How about Indian beef? food? How about I'll, Indian food? Are you I'll Indian? Joe Beef or at my for no, curry? Joe that. Beef is the ba- Joe Beef is my favorite restaurant. I went there. Yeah, that's I, the spot. I, I went to Joe Beef. I had the big night there. Oh, that's my jam. Great. I went there. I love those guys. Yeah, sure. well, I'll bring you to a couple of other places that are a little bit more on the deal that only the in people know. And you'll, Atma you'll for Atma for Indian food. Yeah, we we got you covered. All right, I'm I'm a real good fun pig. <laughs> Perfect, same. All right, all right. All right. All right. treat our treat. Thanks, right. Gavin. Thanks. Me- right. Merci beaucoup. Before as we go, say in Montreal. Um, a, a plus, a plus. Merci beaucoup. A plus tard.